Catherine Tudor, founder of Empower Total Health. Welcome to this week's weekly update, which is about sugar cravings and coffee. Now, I'm often asked by clients whether they should give up coffee for their health sake. It's not always an easy question to give a straightforward answer to, because research shows that coffee consumption seems to have both upsides and downsides. But according to new research, if you're struggling to kick sugar cravings, you may, you may just need to break up with coffee. Now, a lot of people are surprised to hear that research has actually found some apparent benefits of coffee drinking. But in multiple observational studies, this is a study type where they recruit large numbers of people and then they follow them up for many years. And in these types of studies, coffee consumption is actually associated with a lower risk of all-cause mortality, which means dying from any cause, and specifically dying from heart disease, cancer, respiratory disease, stroke, diabetes, and kidney disease. Although it's important to point out that this type of study can't prove that coffee drinking actually caused longer life, only that it was associated with it. And there are many potential what are called confounding factors. So these are other longevity promoting lifestyle factors that may be more common in coffee drinkers than in non-coffee drinkers. And observational studies can't possibly control for all of these confounding factors. Those who drink more coffee also appear to have a reduced risk of developing liver cancer and dying of chronic liver disease, as well as a lower risk of developing type 2 diabetes and dementia. Although once again, there may be confounding factors at play and not all studies show benefit. What about the downsides of drinking coffee? Well, coffee can trigger anxiety through interfering with the action of GABA, which is the brain's kind of natural chill out neurotransmitter. And it badly disrupts sleep, even when you leave as much as six hours between drinking coffee and, and your bedtime. Coffee drinking is also associated with depression, although once again, confounding factors may be operating here. The depressed people may just be drinking more coffee to try to lift their mood. And coffee can also worsen gastroesophageal reflux disease, GERD, or heartburn. Furthermore, if you carry a, a gene variant that's actually very, very common, over 50% of people in some populations have this gene variant, it makes you a slow metabolizer of caffeine. And in that case, drinking two or more cups of coffee a day will significantly raise your risk of developing high blood pressure and having a heart attack. For years, I've also been cautioning clients that coffee consumption seems to make people crave sweets, which can wreak havoc on even the best laid healthy eating plans and certainly can sabotage weight loss. Now, this was something that I just observed over many years of practice, and I didn't understand exactly how coffee, how coffee caused this effect until I read this latest study. Researchers recruited 107 participants and randomly divided them into two groups. Both groups were given a cup of decaffeinated coffee to drink, but in one group, 200 milligrams of caffeine was added back into the coffee, which equates to the amount of caffeine that you would find naturally in one strong cup of coffee. In the other group, the decaf coffee was spiked with a substance called quinine. This is a compound which is intensely bitter, just as bitter as caffeine, but it doesn't have a stimulant effect like caffeine does. Tests show that the participants couldn't actually taste the difference between the coffee that contained caffeine and the coffee that contained quinine. After drinking their coffee, participants were given 10 basic taste solutions representing high and low concentrations of each of the five basic tastes, which is sweet, salty, sour, bitter, and umami, or savory flavor. And they were asked to evaluate them, to rate them as to how bitter or salty or sweet they were. On the next day, the caffeine and the quinine groups were swapped over, and, they, and the participants repeated the same test. There was no difference in how the two test groups perceived the sour, bitter, umami, or salty taste solutions, but when it came to perceiving sweetness, it was a very different story. Not only did the coffee itself, which had a coffee creamer added to it, and that had a small amount of sugar in it, so the coffee itself tasted less sweet when participants were drinking the coffee that had the caffeine added back in. But the, the sweet taste solutions that they then drank were perceived as being less sweet after participants had consumed the coffee with caffeine in it. The researchers concluded, our results suggest that we may be altering our perception of the foods we consume through our consumption of caffeinated foods and beverages. The implications of this research are very thought provoking. If caffeine blunts our ability to perceive sweetness, then anything that we eat after drinking a cup of coffee or a Coke for that matter, or caffeine containing energy drinks, is going to taste less sweet and therefore be less satisfying. And that leaves us with a craving for more sweetness. 
This explains why the natural companion of a cup of coffee is a sugary cake or a biscuit, not an apple. How often do you see pieces of fruit sold in coffee shops? It also explains why restaurants are so keen to serve you coffee at the end of the meal. It probably increases the likelihood of you ordering dessert. Also, I've had many clients tell me that they don't enjoy fruit, which I find kind of strange, but practically all of these people have been coffee drinkers, and now I understand why fruit is so unappealing to them. It just doesn't taste sweet. In order to satisfy their natural human desire for the sweetness that in our evolutionary past we found in ripe fruit, these coffee drinkers are driven to eat calorie-dense, unnaturally sweet processed foods that sabotage their healthy eating and weight loss goals and leave them feeling absolutely helpless to control their cravings. But will quitting coffee affect your ability to concentrate and perform at work? I mean, a lot of workplaces would, would, would grind to a halt without coffee, wouldn't they? Well, another interesting finding in this study was that panellists, that is participants in the study, were also unable to discern whether they had consumed the caffeinated or non-caffeinated coffee with ratings of alertness increased equally, but no significant improvement in reaction times, highlighting coffee's powerful placebo effect. In other words, when you give people a cup of coffee, they feel more alert, regardless of whether they've actually had the caffeine in it or not. It's placebo. They talk themselves into feeling more mentally sharp. The bottom line is that if you just can't get your cravings to sweet foods under control, ditching coffee would be the next obvious step to take. Fortunately, all the health benefits that have been associated with coffee consumption can also be obtained just by eating a whole food plant-based diet and getting regular exercise. And the bonus is that these lifestyle measures also reduce anxiety and depression and reflux and they improve sleep. So you get all the upside of coffee with none of the downside. I hope you've enjoyed this week's weekly update. Please do like it, share the video, and I will catch up with you for next week's weekly update.